Well, good day, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I have a subject that I would like to discuss. It is with regards to uh, portable generators for your home. Now, I did a, a lot of research. I'm sure that's probably one reason why you are watching this video, for example. And there are a lot of ways to skin this cat. I'm not going to be an advocate of, of either gas-powered or solar-powered or any of those things. They all have pros and cons. There's a cost-benefit involved for each one of those. Uh, I had the benefit of being able to talk to individuals who had already been down this road. So, uh, very knowledgeable gentlemen, right? And they really gave me a lot of good input and that sort of uh, gave me a lot of information that I could you know, like put into to, you know, practice. So, I started there and then I started to look at cost availability and so forth. So let's timestamp this video so that we know that people that watch in the future will have some context wrapped around it. We right now are in the end of October of 2024. Uh, earlier this summer in June, we had Alberto come uh, make landfall in the Houston uh, area in the southeast. And then right after that, on the heels of that, right after 4th of July, we had Beryl come through. We were impacted by both those. I'll tell you why in just a little, a little bit. And then the whole southeastern section of the United States was hit by Milton and uh, actually Helene first, then Milton. So Florida, Georgia, the Carolinas, Tennessee, all of the surrounding areas, I'm sure, were impacted just not as bad as those states were, right? So we got a lot of people scrambling and those poor individuals were having, are still having to this day right now, uh, still trying to recover. For that. It's going to be years before... Uh, everything is put back together and any semblance of normalcy starts to visit with these people. So this is a horrible situation. Uh, I want to talk about my specific uh, housing, right? So we are inland, we are in North Texas. This is what we will call for the video our inland property. And then we also have a, uh, a, a small cottage down on the coast. It's very, very close to the water. And um, uh, it's quite a small house, but it still has its needs. And it's also very vulnerable to power uh, outages and, and things of that nature. Now, in Texas in general, everybody knows about the great power failure in 2021. Uh, we got burned by that. Uh, we had nowhere to go. The whole state was covered in ice and, you know, travel was nearly impossible. From our inland home to our Beach House, it is about six hours drive. Uh, it's five hours, but it's actually six hours if you stop for gas and, you know, you know, take a break or whatever. So it's not that close and you can't necessarily escape from one uh, to the other. The other problem is when Barrel came in, we were at the Beach House and we lost power for, for five days. And it would seem obvious that you would be able to just escape from that place and come up to the inland home in North Texas. Not so fast uh, there, people. Uh, so the problem was is that Murphy hit us. The air conditioner here at the inland place had died like two days before a barrel hit. The other problem was is that the only way to escape the beach was the highway was completely covered in rubble that had been caused by the storm. So a couple days after they cleared all that out, we still did not have air conditioning here and we had no power there. So I mean it's just a it was just a disaster. There was no escaping it and you know summer in Texas is just absolutely brutal. Um, so all of these things sort of started working together and you know got me moving on what I want to do about this this problem because we have been impacted I would say 20 times since we purchased that little cottage down on the beach man it, it just it just never seems to stop down there so uh, I also configured this house so that we could utilize anything that we purchased to generate power at the beach we could uh, utilize that here. I'm going to explain how we're going to do that here in just a little bit. All right, we've got a WEN generator here, W-E-N, WENproducts.com. I paid for, I have nothing to do with them, no association with them, um, but you're going to find that I'm really, really happy with these machines. Let's unbox this thing, I guess you might say, and we'll get it going, and then we'll go over some of the features, and then I'll show you my final configuration as to how I actually use these. 
So let's just look at the machine here quick. All right, so first of all, the Win brand. Let's talk about that for a second, right? So about four years ago, I started to wash them. I needed a tool, I found them, and I was like, wow, that was really reasonably priced, and, and how about them apples, right? I never bought it, but I continued to watch the brand. When I needed these uh, generators, I went specifically out to the website, and then I went and purchased both at Home Depot and Amazon um, because I could, you know, get like ten bucks cheaper one day, and you know, ten not ten dollars cheaper another day. So I've been really, really impressed with this stuff. Right? I think it's reasonably priced. It seems to be really high quality. I thought it was pure China, and it may be. I don't really know, but they're based in Illinois, and they've been around for a long time. I can't. I'm a tool follower, man. I'm, a, I'm like a tool guy. I, I don't know why. I had really never heard of these these. Uh, products until kind of recently right like four years or so but man I am impressed with this stuff so let's look at this generator and go over some of the things that we can talk about without it running because it has a it has a, a digital readout that works only while it's running so let's look at it right so we got a 40 800 max <clears throat> max capacity and a 4000 uh, run so 4800 4, surge 4,000 rated. You don't run these things, you don't run these things 100%, right? They need to be, you know, 60, 70, something like that. You'll, it, you'll shorten the life of the machine if you just run the, the, the devil out of it. I'm going to show you my solution to that here in just a minute. The machine comes on wheels and it has this sort of this luggage style of extendable handle. I keep it on these four wheelers because it's just easier to move around, right? Just everything. And I don't have to remove the cover in order to move them. It, where, whereas with the luggage style, which works perfectly, it's amazing. I love it. Um, I have to take the cover off. So I just tend to move things around. And uh, I bought these little four wheelers over at uh, uh, Harbor Freight. And uh, they fit perfect on it. So notice that too, it is an inverter generator. It is not a non-inverter generator, right? So on the front here, we have a 30 amp uh, NEMA plug for, say like if you have an RV or so, something, you got your standard 120s, there's actually four of those. And um, you know, just just this this rubber is just nice rubber, <laughs> right? I mean, it's, it's not gonna just crumble in your hand. This is pretty amazing actually. We've got your standard USBs, we've got a 12 volt uh, old style cigarette lighter. Uh, we've got an electric start on this machine. It also has a pull start on the other side. I'll show it in a minute. And then we got this thing called an eco mode, uh, either off or on. And what it does is, is that it will kick down the RPMs uh, based on load. So it, it'll you'll monitor that and adjust it accordingly. This is the LCD or digital readout. It shows us a couple things. One, it shows utilization, 0, 50, 100%. Then over here on this side, uh, we've got some other lights and so forth, and I, you know, haven't seen those light up yet, but this will tell you how much gas is in it. It's going to light up. We'll look at that here in a minute, and um, it's got a full load of uh, a little less than three gallons uh, is what this machine will hold. It weighs about 70 pounds, and then you add, you know, your three gallons. If it, a gallon is eight pounds, then you're, you know, you're, 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 you're approaching 90 pounds of, uh, of weight here. We've got these two interfaces here. We're going to talk extensively about those here in just a minute because we're going to put those into practice. I'll show you how they work. And then over here on the side, we have the pull start. And I'm not going to lie to you, I did start this machine after I removed the cover because it has a feature on it which says fuel off. You see that? So if you're going to store this machine for any length of time, I start them once a month. So what I do is is I've got a choke, a run, a fuel off, and an engine off. This will run the carburetor dry so that gas is not being kept within the machine. So what I wanted to do was really demonstrate the battery start. It, it just works great and, and I love that. So once you've gotten past that, uh, you just use the battery start, but to get it going, I had to pull on this maybe Oh, six or eight times, right? Something like that. You don't, you, have, you don't have to be ripping away on this thing. It's not that hard. You know, I have done oil changes on these after the initial eight hours. And uh, I will tell you that changing oil on this thing is not easy. I would, uh, I fashion a, uh, a funnel out of a piece of cardboard, tip the whole machine over on its side and dump it into a, a catch can. So that's the way that works. And, you know, you've got spark plug. It's just very well labeled. It's just, 
to me, it's just a pretty machine. I mean, it just, it just really is. It's, it's just so cool. Two machines. Two machines. So what do you do? Do you run eight extension cords uh, into the house? I mean, well, you certainly could, right? I mean, this is a power out situation. This is camping in your house. You're going to do whatever you need to do in order to make this work. Question is, do you have eight extension cords and are they long enough? You got to route that stuff somehow and that you better do some measuring, right? Would be, would be my thought on that. Uh, fun fact, in summer, when you lose power, your refrigerator will give you two days of cooling. After that, everything is thawed out and basically room temperature. On the third day, it's gonna to start to smell, right? That stuff needs to come out and get thrown away. In our case, barrel was right after 4th of July. We'd had our kids down we, for a week and we had all this great food and we had leftovers and I just love leftovers. Looking forward to getting into that. And we threw every bit of that away after they left <clears throat> because it had all gone bad. Your garbage disposal on about the third day completely clogged up. Unless you have some way to get power to that garbage disposal, that thing's clogged up, man, and it's going to start to stink, okay? What I ended up doing was plugging it up because I did not have my system that we're talking about here. I didn't have it, right? I started to build it with barrel coming at us just because I couldn't take it anymore. But that being said, we didn't have that. We didn't have power. That garbage disposal will start to reek in short order. Plug it, fill the fill the, uh, the, the basin with water, and you've got essentially a, a, a water plug, right, is how that works. So let's go into this bag, this little carry bag that I keep with me, and let's pull out the magic thing because we've got two generators, but so what, right? We've got to run eight, Got to run eight extension cords. Well, that's not going to work for me, right? So we're going to hook up this thing. This is called a parallel connector by when. Its purpose is to tie together any of their inverter generators of any size together. Now, there has this has a maximum of 6,000 watts, right? But if you do some math in your head, the 48 and the 48, we got 9,600 watts peak and we've got 8,000 watts run, right? That's maximum, we don't run maximum. This thing only handles 6,000 watts. So I'm sure they'll come up with something bigger you know, later on, but for now, this is what we use, and I've tested this, it works chef's kiss, right? Let's hook it up. You can mount this thing to a board or something like this, but I, I zip tie it right to the top. I've got a couple of pieces of scrap leather so that you don't, this is plastic and this is metal, but still it, it's gonna vibrate, right? Also, if I was gonna use this long term, I would pull it off those four wheel dollies because I don't want this thing like rolling down the driveway or you know trying to escape because of vibration. We're, we're just doing a video here, it's just a demo. positive, negative, or color-coded, both on the machine and the cable. That's one connection. All right, that is two machines that have been ganged together, giving us the power of both machines with the choke point of this guy right here, which is 6,000 watts for me is everything and when we get to the beach segment of this I'll show you why uh, we got stairs involved we've got possible storm surge we have a lot of considerations that need to be taken into account so 
that is why portability is so important to me, excuse me. Uh, so uh, now we got this, let's go ahead and go on to the next step. What I haven't shared with you yet is that I actually own three machines, all identical, all inverters. Inverters are much quieter than non-inverter style machines. And it's difficult to explain, but if you listen to a bunch of generators running like at the beach, for five days, it, it creates an anxiety, man. You just don't want to listen to this anymore. Picture yourself just standing next to a lawnmower for five days, morning, noon, and night. It never ends. Inverters are much quieter. You double them up, it's a little louder. There's no question about it, but it's definitely something to consider. They're usually more expensive, um, but there's <laughs> some benefit there that's that's really hard to quantify so that's one of the reasons why we have inverters and the fact that I can um, <clears throat> double these up now why do I have three one lives here at the inland house one lives at the beach house one travels with us back and forth so at any moment in time no matter where we're at we can double our power and in that's our configuration, right? But there's also a little bit of kit that needs to roll with us, right? Which I have tried to make as easy as possible. Uh, I like small packages, they're easier to move, they're easier to pack, you know, all that. And um, that's what we're gonna look at now. Uh, three bags roll with us here. Uh, you saw me pull out the parallel connector out of this bag. We've got a couple other little goodies in here. Uh, one is this uh, pigtail that uh, allows me to plug directly into a single machine. So if I get lazy and I don't take a machine with me, but I, hopefully I have the bag, I can just plug up to one of these. Now that's a big connector. We haven't gone over that yet. We'll talk about that in just a minute as to how that works, right? Then we've got a gas siphon. So <laughs> we'll talk about gas later on, but um, one way to get gas is to siphon it out of another machine or, or, or something else, right? A boat, we have a golf cart, it has five gallons of gasoline in it, right? So if we run short on gas, right, I'm gonna siphon that stuff out of there. So that's what that is. User manual, oil, oil uh, funnel, you know, stuff like that. Right? So that, that's that bag. This is a ginormous extension cord. I'm a big believer in oversizing uh, anything electrical. The reason why is because it makes the machines, uh, when it's too small, it makes the machines run too hot. The cord itself will get hot and, and uh, heat is the enemy of all machines. So try and like oversize it, right? So this is a ginormous extension cord with three plugs here. Of course, you need to be able to plug into multiple things with probably extension cords, right? Like 12 gauge. Uh, I don't buy that orange stuff anymore. Uh, I mean, I used to when I was you know, a young man and uh, it was cheap and it did the job, but man, after a while, it'll start to get hot and um, so will the machine. So I don't use that stuff anymore. I use, uh, I think it's 12 gauge. It's whatever the most expensive stuff on the shelf is at Home Depot. Let's put it that way, right? And it's thick. You can tell a big difference. And certainly the price is wildly different than that cheap orange stuff. The cheap orange stuff, it's good for like a trouble light. That's about it, right? Can't do anything more for you. So this travels with us. Boom. This guy is the big Monty. I oversized everything. Like I mentioned, this is the cable to from the generator to the house. Actually, from the parallel connector to the house, we're going to hook this up. We're going to kill power to the house, and then we're going to run the house off of generator. <clears throat> so one thing I have not mentioned throughout all of this conversation is, is that we do not have the capability for 240 volt service. Only 120. So anything that you can plug into the wall is 120. Anything that you sort of don't plug into the wall is going to be 240. For example, would be your, your oven, your stovetop, your dryer, 
your hot water heater, your central air, your central heat. None of that is a part of this plan. None of that works, okay? We can plug in everything, but we can't use those particular devices. It's just the way it is, part of the cost benefit, and you can go get a relatively inexpensive machine that's big, loud, and heavy, and it'll run 240, right? But you're going to be, if you don't have uh, uh, maybe a tie-in at your breaker box, you're going to be running big extension cords, right? you know, you got to take that into consideration. So there's some logistics there that have to be considered. Um, our answer to that is we have a little two-burner stove. I mean, I think it was like 30 bucks. And we have one at each house, right? So we can cook some beans, some soup, fry an egg, you know, you name it, right? Anything you would do on your stovetop, you can do that. Uh, electric blankets, when it gets cold, uh, just plug them into the wall, right? And, and run that. We have a fireplace here. We do not have one at the beach. And, you know, what are you going to do, right? It's always a, there's always a trade-off and something that you need to be willing to give up um, in order to go sort of with, with your plan. So that's how we have that's how we have done it, and um, it, 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 that's acceptable. Uh, we'll we'll live with that. Air conditioning, we have air conditioning units, right? That that go into the window. No central air conditioning. You can't sleep. I'm a, here to tell you, you can't sleep. That house will get hot in no time flat. Go outside, the mosquitoes eat you up, right? So it, it is a very difficult situation to be in. So a couple of simple window units you plug them into the wall they drip their water outside your your golden as far as air conditioning is going you might even need blankets to to cover you up at night who knows main breaker panel the transfer switch actually I have two meters on there it's kind of cool I, I wasn't expecting that so this is just the type that this electrician puts in it's what he's comfortable with and if that's what he's comfortable with then I guess I am too right so what we're gonna do here in just a minute is we're gonna start the generators we're gonna let them warm up and then we're gonna cut power in the panel right there at that main right cut that off and then we're going to take these switches and and move them all from where it says line to generator and we're going to push all these things up right so you can't you have a certain amount of control uh, in terms of what circuits you want to run and so forth i've not found a need for that uh it's really just you know maybe turn some stuff off or you know, you know whatever you know you don't really need to mess with that um the, con the configuration at the beach is quite a bit different we'll look at that later uh, I've still got to fix this hole that uh, was created after he installed this uh, particular uh, device. And I don't know exactly what I'm going to do about that because I got a round piece of stuff in there in the middle, right? So uh, we'll get back to that at some point, but uh, that's got to still happen. And that's what it looks like assembled. Hmm? What you do not want to do is have these machines out in the weather. It's very unlikely that during a horrible storm that you would be hooking the stuff up. But sometimes, you know, it can continue to rain or, you know, maybe there's some sleet, snow, you know, hail, you know, coming down. You have to protect the machines. So you need a little bit of length on this cord. I have a very, I guess, unique way of doing this at the beach. We'll look at that later. Um, but these machines need to be protected. And, and it's just, you know, that's just the way it is. Uh, what I can do is point the exhaust, uh, leave them in the garage and point the exhaust out, close the garage door if I have to, like for security purposes. We're going to start these machines up, warm them up, and then we'll cut power and run some stuff on the inside of the house. Actually, a lot of stuff. zero we're not running anything that's gas full that's the 
total time that the machine has run throughout its life. Nine hours. Uh, I guess that's voltage that it's putting out. I don't remember what that is, like amps or something. And that's the session time. So as the machine runs, and if you never shut it off, it would just keep counting, and it goes back to zero when the machine is shut off. Let's cut power. Garage lights went off. Generator. Garage lights are on. Let's see what utilization is. Almost nothing. Fan running, light, fan, TV's going, internet's going for sure, right? Let's crank some stuff up. Get some lights, more lights. Let's uh, boil some water. Barely hear the uh, machines running. Of course, the cl uh, clocks have all reset, right? So let's do one, three, zero. Cooking with Crisco there. Let's make some toast. Toast, toast, toast. Turn that guy on. Garbage disposal working. Light going. Got all these lights going. Refrigerator. Sure is working. All right, let's go see what our utilization is. You know, everything in here that's, you know, like like power, like you don't think about, like routers and, you know, stuff like that. It's all running. You know, 50, 60, 70%, something like that. Don't run these things to death or they'll, you know, they're, they're not gonna last very long. I mean, that's, that's the whole point of it. These things sip gas. There's about three gallons in each machine and uh, that will get you eight hours. Depends on how, what you're using. So the parallel connector is our choke point, right? That's 6,000 watts, mentioned that earlier. Let's say that for some reason you wanted to, you needed more power for something you can still plug in to the front and the 120 outlets and, and run something, right? You've got additional power on these machines that's available to you. So it's not something to be forgotten should you need that, right? I, I don't know what scenario that you would run into that, but it's there, right? So actually a bunch of power is still waiting to be used if you, if you actually needed it. Remember this guy? Showed that in my gig bag. Let's hook it up and I'll show you how it works. So if for some reason, like say a machine died or something, you know, I don't know, right? But you can just run native off of one machine. This is a 30 amp plug going to a 50 amp cable. So you would just run your whole house off of the 30 amp native single machine. So I, I just, it just seemed to be intuitive to me that that would be helpful should that happen. I don't know what scenario you actually use that in, but we have it and it's nice to know that I can do that if I have to. Fuel, oh boy, right? It, it's the weak point in the whole system, just like no sunlight is a weak point in a you know, solar system. So there's, again, pros and cons. What do we got? Five, 10, 15, 20, 22 gallons of fuel at both places if it sips i'm not going to do math on on a video but i can kind of guesstimate it right they, these things sip gas i mean they hardly use anything so it's three gallons for each machine running for about eight hours or so 
it's not a whole lot when you take 20 to 25 gallons. I, again, at the beach, I can siphon out of a golf cart if I have to, it's an extra five gallons. You know, here in, in the inland house, right, somewhere I can drive to get gasoline. I don't want to do that, especially if it's icy. We get that every year. Every single year we get ice and people are just crashing into things and it's, it's like horrific. I don't want to do that, but there's probably gas available within a reasonable distance. At the beach, eh, not so much. Very, very difficult to acquire gasoline there. And, uh, I, you know, I just, just to watch your consumption, right? I mean, just like turn stuff off and you won't use as much gas. That's the answer. Again, cost benefit, it's a pros and cons scenario. All right, well, we head to the beach in about two weeks or so, and uh, I will finish this video out by showing the nuances, I guess, of the connection to the house. Other than that, it's uh, pretty much the same, but I also want to talk about portability, storm surge, and the vulnerability of the machines at the beach. So we'll get there, and uh, let's go. Well, all right, ladies and gentlemen, it's about two and a half weeks later, and we have made it to the beach cottage and we are going to hook up the generators here we're going to look at some of the nuances of this place and why i've chosen to do what i do uh, it's a unique house that requires a unique solution so that's what we're going to look at here let's go upstairs and we'll work our way down All right, that's the Gulf of Mexico. You can see the vegetation at the end of the street. Uh, Alberto knocked that down flat, which was formerly sand dunes, and knocked it flat. Then a month later, Beryl showed up. Beryl came all the way up the street, and we're about five houses down from the water, and filled all of this. Every bit of this was covered up in water, and I will take and throw up a couple of still shots that I got of the storm surge coming up. Uh, my truck would have been in axle deep water had uh, I not moved it before the storm actually hit. If storm surge becomes a problem downstairs, both generators come up here and we take the big yellow cable Park the machines right in front of this window. It's generally protected here. Throw it over the deck, and we are right above the receptacle as we stand. Throw it over the deck and plug in that way. House is on 14 foot piers, and the slab itself, the cement underneath, is 10 feet above sea level. So, in th the theoretical storm surge, before it comes into the house would be about 24 feet. I don't believe that for a minute. It'd be way problematic uh, for it to even get close to that. Uh, so this is my one car shop and we have my gas storage solution here where I kind of boosted them up off the floor differently than I did for the inland house. And then if we come over here to the FAFO desk, we've got a generator stored here and another one just right across. So it gives me flexibility when I have two machines rather than one big machine. And we've got a heck of a staircase to go up to for 14 feet, right? And there's that guy. So we've already, we've already tested that, right? My wife and I can carry these things up and of course all the gas got to go with it and everything. Uh, this little shop here, is a, like a throwaway. If storm surge comes up, everything in here is ruined. It's not insured or can't be insured. Uh, and that, that's the way it goes, or else you can spend some incredible premium uh, to, in, on insurance to get this covered. It, it's just not worth it, right? Just, just write it all off and, and send it on its way. So that's how that works. And um, the house should stay intact, even if the garage were you know, massively damaged, but that is why we have to get those generators upstairs when storm surge shows up. Main panel here is definitely set up differently. It's just one 200 service coming in and that feeds upstairs to a small hallway. Here is the receptacle that I had installed, and I've already pre-wired it. I have also 
uh, set up the machines. I ran them for about 15 minutes or so and warmed them up. So here's the other side of the receptacle where the black cable is. It's tucked back there in the in the back. It comes across here, runs through here, comes up, and this is our transfer switch. And you can see how it's labeled. We've got the grid power and generator power, so we haven't switched yet. We'll do that in a minute. And you can see these two big gray cables, one going uh, on the lower and then one in the upper. That's what feeds the distribution panel upstairs. Let me stand back here and get a little better look at it. Yeah, that goes up to that distribution panel. And it's just a different setup, right? Because the house is upstairs rather than, uh, you know, a single story. <clears throat> so let's start her up. We'll do a switch here that I'm probably... I'm probably going to run the generators, the house on the generators for probably 30, 30, 45 minutes or so, something like that, right? Just, just a part of my test to make sure everything's working right and, and good. It's not very hot today, which is really, really nice. So I don't have to mess around with, you know, like window unit air conditioners. I wouldn't do that for a test anyway, but I think we're good to go. So let's start her up and see what we got. Garage lights are off. Garage lights come on. Ooh, low on gas. Yeah, this is the one that's been here. That's why that battery probably just went dead from sitting. And uh, you can see we're at almost zero utilization. That's true on both. This one came with us, full can a full tank of gas, zero utilization. Like I said, we'll just go ahead and run it. Yeah, I've stepped into the back here just to kind of get away from the machines because uh, I don't want to shout over them, but we'll run for 40 minutes or so, 45. And I uh, hope you got something out of that. That is one way to power up your house. And if you don't have a generator already, I'd strongly encourage you to do that, even if it's just like can handle one plug, one refrigerator, one garbage disposal, right? It's, it's pretty important, and you can do that for a very little money. Uh, so that's, uh, that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for joining me, and we'll catch you on the next one.